Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Narrow Path Live and in color. Glad to be with you uh, this morning on um, Friday. So, um, lots of work to be done today for all of us, um, possibly for most. And um, looking forward to um, something on the weekend that uh, gives you joy, happiness, um, some rest and relaxation, and hopefully, as I always say, some time to contemplate your life and um, think about the Lord and what He wants for you uh, at this stage in your life, at your age and stage in the game. That's certainly what I'm doing right now in my life, and so I encourage you to do the same. I'm going to get uh, back into um, Romans chapter 13. We, we only got done with um, really the first two verses uh, yesterday, the debt of love that we owe. Um, talking about neighbor love, etc. And I also talked about a new lease on life, about a little product that I had um, 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 introduced to you that I hope you'll pay attention to. Uh, I did make uh, two mistakes. One yesterday was <clears throat> I wrongly told you my email. <laughs> so if you saw that episode yesterday about um, being a slave to love and a new lease on life, uh, from uh, Romans uh, 13, 8, and 9, my email is totally backwards. Um, the correct email, and I'll put that in the notes of yesterday's episode, is uh, the narrow path at markneilprince.com. So I got it totally backwards. Um, I had said markneilprince at the narrow path.com. That is not correct. It is the narrow path at markneilprince.com. So take a note of that. Another thing that I did, and that's just because I was going from my memory and didn't really um, fact check it real quick is when I was talking about Dietrich Bonhoeffer in the conclusion of our episode of uh, God and Caesar, very strange and nuanced bedfellows. I mentioned that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was in opposition to the Nazi regime and, of course, suffered a death uh, because of it, because they and other pastors um took out a, a hit against Hitler and of course failed. He was not shot. He was and killed. He was he was hung. So even even worse. Um but that that if you you know that was a message that um hopefully or devotional thoughts that I hopefully you'll you'll remember and think about and hopefully today will too. I'm I'm actually gonna um gonna do what I don't always do and go back and read this portion of the scriptures um, in that I already had read on the first day. The word of God says, love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Actually, we covered that yesterday. I'm sorry. So we're going to start in verse 11 and 12, and I think that's all we're going to do today, and we'll finish 13 perhaps, uh, 13 and uh, 14 perhaps tomorrow. Um, the, the verse 11 says, do this, talking about the, the neighbor as the fulfillment of the law, knowing the time that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. That should sound familiar, um, coming first of all from the scriptures, but also from me. Uh, awaken is something that we all really need to be right now. That um, for you to awaken from sleep, for now salvation is nearer to us than when we believed verse 12 the night is almost gone and the day is near therefore let us lay aside the deeds of darkness or repentance from those things and put on the armor of light so that's a lot to talk about we'll try to try to get right into that first of all i guess i would call this this time today is time passages you know i had also um i had also said <laughs> i was trying to think of the song time passages and i was, i i gave that to gary wright when it was actually al stewart so i really really botched it up this week this is a great song but uh, there's a lot of names i could come up for this title but i, I came up with time passages uh, eschatological moral summons hmm Eschatological is just a fancy preacher word for theological word for the end of times. Okay, doomsday prophet type stuff, man. But anyway, um, 
this is a this is a really powerful, very powerful scripture. Paul is talking about knowing the time. He says, "Do this knowing the time." Now, understandably, um, he says, "Knowing the time, it's already the hour for you to awaken from sleep." And he's, of course, talking to a New Testament audience who something that's very foreign to us who began to acutely know that allegiance to this uh, Jewish Messiah, which was viewed, Christianity at that time was viewed really at that time uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a cult of, of Judaism and not, of course, the full um, you know, religion. I call it the truth that Christianity now, of course, is and has been for many, many years. But he's, he's telling them, to, in light of knowing the time, in light of knowing what is really just um, so obvious in front of your face, if you were a New Testament believer, recognize that any day you could lose your job. We're not too far from that now. You could lose your, your ability to practice your particular craft because of maybe the craft that you were participating in did not fit in the, with the allegiance to Christ. And also recognize that any time you could have your property taken from you, and, and more importantly, that you could be killed in a really, really, really bad way. In a really, really, really bad way. Of course, written during the time of Nero, who was not a nice guy, especially when it came to Christians. But Paul says, after talking about this neighbor love, after talking the last couple chapters about the kind of people we were to be in the world, he talks about knowing the time and, and, and that it's already the hour. Now, I, I have no doubt that the New Testament Christians felt uh, acutely a sense that Jesus could come back at any time. They were looking forward to it, I think. Um, I, I think um, they, they certainly wrote with the eschatology in mind. It was in Paul's mind all the time. And whether or not Paul and others knew that it was not that time, but he was preparing them for the building of the church or, or what, I think in a sense the church is always to be in a state of, of course, knowing the time um, and um, recognizing that it's already the hour. You know, the Word of God says in the Old Testament that the sons of Issachar understood the times and knew what they should do about it. I wonder if that's you today. I wonder if you you really understand the times. I mean, you know, if you listen to just the talking points on on your boob tube, as my dad used to affectionately call it, you know, you you just think people who talk like that are conspiracy theorists or what have you. Your class our classification of people is pretty uh, just knows no bounds these days uh, for just simply causing people to do what Paul said to awaken. Uh, from sleep, it's interesting that this language um, is uh, um, is it, it means to be physically and spiritually asleep. Uh, we see that in the life of Jonah when we study the prophet Jonah, that when he was down in the ship while the ship was perishing and he was asleep at that time, he was not asleep. Uh, uh, for a good reason, like Jesus was when he was on the boat with his disciples. No, he was asleep because he was spiritually, uh, he was physically asleep, but he was also spiritually asleep. He had lost his way. And quite honestly, if you look around and you don't think that the church has lost its way in America, much less, you know, other places, particularly in the West, then I don't really know, I don't really know what to tell you, except for i pray for you and I don't mean that you know kind of uh, sarcastically because um, things are things are awry things are rotten in Denmark things are not as they should be now in a sense that's always been the case just like it was in Paul's case he's telling them to awaken to know the time to awake from their sleep it's it's already the hour um, it, it's even more so as we see what well, seems like the day approaching at whatever time I don't know. I'm you know I'm not a um, particular prophet. I think I am hopefully somewhat prophetic. That would be my prayer uh, for myself and for people that might would dare listen to anything I had to say. But 
this is uh, it, to be awakened is is to be awakened intellectually and morally and of course eschatologically in terms of your end times clock in terms of how you understand things and of course um, this is something that's always on the minds and hearts should be always on the minds and hearts of Christians not your 401k not that you're not supposed to pay attention to those things but if you claim to be a Christian I mean a, a real Christian I'm not talking about somebody who went to church a few times or your mom and dad went to church like I said earlier or maybe you got baptized or christened or sprinkled or whatever it was that you did with your particular denominational slant if it did not affect your life to where you're somewhat a, <laughs> a noticeable disciple of Jesus uh, in your goings and and, 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 and doings then um, you know you need to, look to you need to check that okay but it's always on the minds of, of every New Testament Christian, and I'm, I, I often wonder um, if if the average Christian knows the time. I would submit to you know that they don't. The average Christian does not, or the average professing Christian does not know, is not acutely aware. They are not awakened. They are asleep. Um, they're, they're asleep to neighbor love, for sure, as we talked about yesterday, but they're asleep to anything that would cause them to be uh, radically different than everyone else because of their faith in Christ. And so that's something that's, uh, and Paul reminds me, he says, hey, the time the time is actually near. If it was near to them, well, I, what do you think it is now? The time is much nearer, okay, to us than when we believed. When we first started out the gate, when we first got on the path of the Christian path and started walking with Jesus, um, more and more now, certainly from 2019 to this moment in 2023, the world has drastically changed and many of its uh, ulterior motives have been uncovered and revealed, although they would like for you to blindly pretend that that is not the case. And they're doing a good job. they got a lot of people out there who are glad to be blind as long as you, they can keep their Beamer and their 401k and their house and, and their second home and etc. But this is not the way Christians are supposed to, to supposed to be. In fact, our rallying cry right now probably should be, well, not probably is even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Many times, my wife can tell you whenever we're talking, and we just see something either on the news or something happens in our neighborhood or in the world or whatever, or just something happens within a, a, a you know a family squabble or whatever. You know, I, I, every now and then I'll echo, you know, even so, come Lord Jesus. And that is the rallying cry, should be the rallying cry of all of us. So, But Paul gets into it. He says, he says the night is this is almost gone. You're, you're sleeping. The night's about over. It's going to be daytime. You need to go ahead and be awake. Okay, because the things that happen at night are the things that are going to creep up and get you. Okay, the day is near. The day is near us. Um um, uh, we are to be, Paul says, so therefore in light of that reality to let us lay aside the deeds of darkness, Ephesians 5.11 will say, not only are we to, to, to lay aside the deeds of darkness in, in all capacities, in all forms of our life, but we are to, in fact, also Ephesians 5.11 says we're to expose them. Part of being awakened, part of being aware of the time, part of understanding the times, awakened from your sleep, is seeing the darkness and letting people, others know. Certainly, as a as a as a Christian, okay, and not as a as a, as a, as a um, you know as someone who who hurts people or anything like that, but as a Christian. Um, we're still supposed to be very vocal and very um, vigilant about exposing darkness, letting people know where the darkness is at so that they can avoid it. So if you know the times, and if you sense like me and you recognize that the times are certainly nearer than when we first began, as Paul said to these people 2,000 years ago, or a little less than 2,000 years ago, we're supposed to we're supposed to lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of, of life, excuse me, of light. So we're beings of light. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. We emit infrared light. Um, the, the, the light is the source of all goodness, 
um, that we get from the sun and the sun. Yeah, that's right. So we're to be beings of light during this dark time. That's not easy because beings of light will also be exposed and readily recognized. If you're not readily recognized, and that applies to me too, you might want to you might want to look into that. What is being a, a, a an armor of light, having an armor of light, having a full armor of God, as Ephesians six will tell us, things like that. What does that mean for man be pan be Christians? There's a lot of them, guys. I talk to people day in and day out that they talk a good game. They add Jesus to the mixture of their words. They read books. Um, a lot of them are, you know, kind of name it and claim it and prosperity people. But they, you, you see some fruits. But down deep, what what we worship in America and the, uh, what we worship is 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 the dollar bill. And of course, if you've ever had dollar bills, you understand what I'm saying. Hopefully, you you understand how easy it is to get you off course. But also, you know, being without it, you also wish you had some. So I get it. But at the same time, um, most most American Christians are so absorbed with with their wealth building that it really kind of gets in the way of what real authentic biblical Christianity is all about. And that, that's really sad. It's a sad thing to witness, which is why it's very difficult to find a good church nowadays, especially since COVID. And if you don't, and I know there's people in here that aren't on the path yet. If you, if you, if you, if you're not on the path and, and you see that, that's a good reason. I understand why you've, you've probably rejected the faith, but again, I encourage you to get into this book, read it for yourself. So ask God, the Holy Spirit, to reveal Himself to you, and I believe you will. So we talked today about time passage and being um, uh, people of light, and um, we're going to get into and just kind of unpack that a little bit more tomorrow and wrap up. So it may be a shorter session, maybe not, because we're still going to be talking about being people of light and what that uh, what that means. Um, as a Christian as well. But anyway, um, the Lord is near. I believe he's near. And I hope your heart, your spirit resonates with that too. And that it calls you and compels you to live accordingly. We'll talk about that more as we go. I pray you have a great day, a great weekend. Lord willing, I may see you tomorrow morning. But be sure to go and um, like this video would mean a lot love to hear your comments if something ministers to you take the extra effort and comment to your brother in christ maybe share it with somebody who might need to hear this um and then also subscribe just hit the little subscribe button hit the all button and hit the little bell and all of these will come to you and you can watch them as you as you have time as they come you can also go to my blog markneilprince.com and read some stuff there from some years out Anyway, God bless you. I love you and peace in Jesus' name.